Live from the Kennedy Space Center at Cape Canaveral, Florida, NBC News covers the flight of Columbia. The shuttle begins. Sponsored in part by Ford and your Ford dealer, who invite you to test drive the EXP, America's new personal sports coupe. Here are NBC News correspondents, John Chancellor and Tom Brokaw. Well, <laughs> good morning, everybody. Here we are again. If you saw the dress rehearsal, uh, welcome to the opening. We actually think it will go today. The countdown is proceeding. They think it'll go at 7 o'clock in the morning, and let me introduce my colleagues. Tom Brokaw, whom you all know, and Joseph Kerwin. Dr. Kerwin is an astronaut and was uh, a very valuable member of our coverage team here two days ago when uh, the shuttle did not go. And this morning, we think it really will go. They, uh, 7 o'clock, one hour from now, they really are aiming for that. Every indication is that it will go uh, perfectly this morning. Uh, the weather is a slight problem. It's a little bit dark out there. And incidentally, it's dark in here largely because we have a filter on this window. Uh, it is darker on your set in here than it is out there, and you'll see out there in just a minute. Tom, about the weather. We want to talk about the weather. There was a little bit of nervousness about it yesterday because uh, yesterday morning they had cloud cover in this area. If they'd had that much cloud cover this morning, they would not have been able to go forward with the launch at this time. Uh, from what we've been hearing from the weather, it looks pretty good. The winds are quiet, uh, down to about three knots. They don't want crosswinds because if there is trouble on the launch, the Columbia would have to return to a long landing strip here at the Kennedy Space Center, and it comes in without power, so they can't have any crosswinds. We have Frank Field standing by just outside our NBC booth here overlooking the launch pad, and let's get an update from him now on what the weather situation is. Frank? Well, Tom, the weather's just about perfect. The only problem with the weather's been that it's a little moist here, and so our weather map simply ran away. But right out over the launch pad itself, you can see the water's at perfectly calm. We've got some high, thin cirrus uh, up at about 25,000 feet. Uh, the flagpole is just sitting out there limp. As you mentioned, the wind is even less than three knots right here. We have some lower broken clouds, but that's just offshore right over the flight rain ship, which reported uh, just uh, some few scattered to broken clouds. You see there the flagpole, no wind to speak of. So the weather here at Cape Kennedy is just at the Kennedy Space Center is just about perfect. And in the primary landing zone out at Edwards Air Force Base, there too, the weather is almost ideal with high, thin, scattered clouds, uh, winds at about 8 to 10 knots out of the uh, southwest. The visibility is perfect. At all the contingency zones at the uh, Northrop Strip, the weather there too is just about perfect. And all the other zones, Kadena, Hickam, Rhoda, not as good, but the primary zones for the most part are excellent. So the weather is just cooperating. Gentlemen? The astronauts have been up now for about three and a half hours, and they have made their way to the spacecraft, and they are buttoned up inside as of now, and they've been checking out the communications um, facilities that they have and other things. They had a slight problem earlier with some breathing apparatus that was quickly solved, and we have a report now from Ike Siemens on how they spent these last three and a half hours. Astronauts Young and Crippen seem more relaxed at breakfast today than they did on Friday. Crippen even waved and appeared to say hi. Joining them for steak and eggs were NASA officials and former astronaut Harrison Schmidt, now a United States Senator from New Mexico. Meanwhile, at the launch pad, floodlights made the space shuttle gleam in the early morning darkness as tiny bits of hydrogen and oxygen were pumped into the tanks to replace amounts being boiled away. Young and Crippen were already into their pressure suits. Crippen stuffed his pockets with information he'll need during the flight. John Young tried on his space helmet for last-minute adjustments. Doctors had attached instruments to the astronauts to measure their vital signs. They're in good shape. Even at the height of the problems during the first launch attempt on Friday, both men had very low pulse rates. When they left to board Columbia, well-wishers gave them a send-off. For the second time, Young and Crippen climbed into Columbia for their ride into orbit. Someone in the firing room radioed them and jokingly apologized for the stale sandwiches in the box lunches left over from Friday's aborted flight. Throughout the final countdown this morning, NASA spokesman Hugh Harris said again and again, things are going smoothly. Everyone here hopes that continues. Ike Siemens, NBC News, at the Kennedy Space Center. 
Well, John Young ought to be familiar with stale sandwiches. He was the astronaut, of course, who reportedly took along a corned beef sandwich on one of the Gemini missions. We'll be back with continuing coverage. We're going to show you the clock now as the countdown continues. There will be holes built in. It doesn't mean that we're going to launch in 25 minutes. They're going to have a 20-minute hold and then a 10-minute hold. We'll have more from the Kennedy Space Center and the launching of the Columbia Space Shuttle after this.